<laughs> this is a tale of the legendary King Arthur and his nephew Sir Gawain of the Round Table. And this tale begins, as so many tales of King Arthur do, with a damsel in distress. She came as the court was in Carlisle, and her hair was bedraggled, her clothes torn, and her eyes were wild with grief. King Arthur, I come to you, brave and noble king, for my husband has been taken by the evil knight of Carlothalay. I tried to fight him, see how my clothes are torn, but I was not strong enough, and my husband was taken. Oh. You ride to the castle of Carlothalay, slay that knight, and bring me back my husband. Upon hearing this, King Arthur was both shocked and rather excited, for he loves a good adventure. <laughs> and so the next day he saddled his horse, and with nothing but his magical sword Excalibur for company, he rode out. And on his way to the castle of Tarnwathalane, Arthur was required to ride through a dim and dark forest. And the trees in this forest looked as though they were made from human bones. And Arthur felt a trickle of fear run down his spine, and his noble steed stopped in its tracks. And he needed to muster up some courage from somewhere, but he'd got no one with him. So he did all he could. He sang a little tune. Always look on <laughs> And somewhat miraculously, it worked. As he rode out of the forest, and as he did so, his eyes came across a beautiful landscape, and he could not help himself but admire it in all of its beauty. But as he looked <laughs> to his right, he saw a pool as black as death itself. Well, singing had worked once, why not try it again? Always look on the bright side of life. And two out of two, he continued riding and riding and riding until he looked up and he saw the most colossal castle he had seen in his life and striding out from the open drawbridge was a knight dressed purely in black armour. And the sight of the knight of Tarn Wathalane sent over our hero <coughs> a wave of fear which consumed him. <coughs> so, this is the legendary King Arthur, eh? Hey? Tell me, King. Why well, shouldn't you just lop off your head now whilst you grovel before me? You are the devil! Yeah, 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 yeah. I am no devil. I am Sama Gros Major, or you may call me the Black Knight, and I am the loyal servant of Morgana the Fay. But see, my lady is here with me. And with a deal of effort, King Arthur raised his head and saw to the left of the Black Knight was in fact the woman who had sent him on this quest in the first place. Morgana had used magic to disguise herself, and King Arthur was enraged he had been tricked so easily. No, killing you now would be all too easy. <laughs> I shall set you a quest for you like an adventure. You are to return here alone in a year and a day and come armed with only the answer to this question. What is it women desire most in the world? Give me the correct answer, and I shall spare your pitiful life. Give me the incorrect answer, and you shall make a lovely tree in my forest. And with that, the lady and the knight strode back into the castle, leaving King Arthur to gather his wits. And when Arthur returned to the courts of Carlisle and told his nephew Sir Gawain what had happened, Gawain insisted. Oh, it must have been black magic, my lord. That is what caused your fear. By your leave, I shall ride out. And with a raise of his hand, Arthur stopped Gawain in his tracks, and the pair spoke through a plan of action. And they decided that both would search the land for a bit of company on a quest is pleasant. And they would stop every woman and ask every woman the question, for, as they say, many minds are better than one. Excuse me, miss. Hello. Can you ask me a quick question? Most certainly. What is it that women desire most in the world? Oh, that's easy. They desire fine jewels and lovely clothes. Thank you very much. <laughs> Toodle do. <laughs> oh, madam, a moment of your time. Oh, hello. Could you tell me what it is women desire most in the world? Well, all women really want is a husband who loves and cares for. 
Seems reasonable. Good day. <laughs> oh, Lord. Pardon me, old crone. <laughs> Could you tell me what it is that women desire most in the world? Well, apart from you, all women really want is nice pot. A strawberry jam! <laughs> <laughs> I see. <coughs> Ring me! <laughs> and so days turn into weeks, weeks turn into months, and months turn into almost a year. And it came to the time where Arthur and Gawain were due to part. But just before they went their separate ways, they spotted one more woman. And Arthur decided to approach her. Excuse me, good woman. I know the answer to a question you're going to ask, and I shall tell you on one condition, and one condition only. That that boy there marries me. <laughs> and at this, Sir Gawain turned pale, and he knew he had a duty not only to his uncle, but also to the king, and so he agreed. Glad that so. The answer you want is this. Oh, of course! And so, with the question answered, King Arthur set off again for the castle of Tarn Wathelaine. And this time, his heart was not filled with fear, but with pure confidence. <laughs> so, you actually decided to return. Well, let's make this quick. I need a new tree. What is the answer you have for me? The answer to the question is this. What women desire most in the world is to have sovereignty, or the right to make their own decisions. And with this, the Black Knight collapsed, for it was the correct answer, and by saying it, Arthur had freed him from the curse Morgana Le Fay had put upon him. And well, the Black Knight was not a cruel person, really, and he asked to ride to the courts of Carlisle and to do some training with the round table to become a great knight, and Arthur did agree. And on their way back to court, the pair talked of nothing except Sir Gawain's wedding, which was yet to come. And whilst the wedding was nothing spectacular, the same really cannot be said about the after-wedding feast. Not well, quite. Gawain's now ugly wife behaved atrociously. Almost the same amount of food that went into her mouth went down the front of her dress. And she was incredibly rude. She forgot everybody's names and would then sidle up to King Arthur and say, You're not <laughs> But of course this is the time of chivalry, ladies and gentlemen. And no one was more polite than Sir Gawain himself. However, that evening when they were alone in their bedchamber, Gawain sat on his bed, clutched at his hair, and he began to cry. What is up, sugar plum? <laughs> Madam, I cannot conceal my thoughts from you. You forced me to be your husband, and in truth, I would really rather not. Well, why not, Gawain, dearest? <laughs> well, anyone could quite clearly see why not, Gawain, dearest. And Gawain reeled off a list as long as his arm. But as dusk fell over the court of Carlisle, Gawain noticed a change in his ugly wife. Her nose was now perfectly formed, her skin <laughs> unblemished. And her three chins had gone. <laughs> Gawain, you see me now as I truly am. And I gave you the correct answer to free my brother, as any good sister would do. But the first person to marry me has to make a decision, for I am cursed. You have a choice. You can see me this beautiful during the daylight hours when you'll be the envy of every man in court. Or you may see me like this during the hours of darkness when we are alone. Whichever you choose at the other time, I will be that ugly, hideous, fat hag of a thing. Which do you choose? I need a decision. Madam, how can a man make such a decision? I mean, I'm damned if I do, and I'm damned if I don't. I leave it up to you. You decide. And with those two words, Gawain had broken the spell, and his wife would be beautiful day and night. Because after all, all a woman really wants is sovereignty, or the right to make their own decisions. Mm -hmm.